Cost, warranty, degradation rate. How do I choose the best solar panel for my home solar power system? In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you the six things that you need to consider when choosing the right solar panel for your home. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past 11 years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean renewable energy. Now if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge you're going to find expert product reviews and comparisons of pretty much any component that makes up a home solar power system. That could be solar panels, batteries, inverters, uh, even electric vehicle chargers now as we're seeing those tie in to the home solar and storage system. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you the six things that you need to consider when choosing the right solar panel for your home system. Uh, but before I get into the first point, I would like to take a step back and just remind you that when you're looking at choosing a solar panel for your system, the solar panel itself is actually the least important equipment choice that you need to make. The most important choice you wanna make in terms of hardware is which inverter platform or which inverter ecosystem do you want to be operating on? Because it's the inverter platform that's gonna directly impact features, functionality, reliability of the system, um, as well as how you interface with the system, because that's what's gonna be providing your monitoring app. So as of this recording, the top two inverter platforms are Enphase with their IQ8 microinverter system, as well as SolarEdge with their SolarEdge home system based on the DC optimizer. So I would say choosing the right inverter platform is, is the number one most important equipment choice, followed by the, choosing the right battery if you're gonna be doing a battery backup with your solar system. And so choosing the right solar panel itself is really the third most important decision because frankly, in, in terms of functionality of the system, choosing a different solar panel is not really gonna affect functionality. It might affect a little bit efficiency and how much roof space we have to use, but it's not really gonna affect the, the functions of the system. Anyway, now that we have that out of the way, so if we're looking at choosing the right solar panel, what are the factors that we need to consider? Now, the first one you wanna consider, of course, is the aesthetics. You know, do you like the look of this solar panel? You know, if you're installing a solar panel system on your home, especially if the panels are gonna be visible from ground level, you wanna make sure that you like how the solar panel looks. Now, back in the day when I got started in solar, it was very common to use silver frame panels. And, um, and what were called polycrystalline cells, which were like a lighter blue, bluish colored solar cells. But pretty much everything now in terms of residential solar panels has gone to the all black on black design. Black frame, black cells, and black back sheet. So when you look at the solar panels on the roof, it should just look like a sheet of black glass on the roof. You shouldn't see like little checker marks or little grid lines. Everything should just be a consistent black aesthetic. That's what most homeowners are demanding today. Um, so if you're getting a proposal for a solar power system, make sure you check the, the spec sheet or at least see photographs of that particular uh, make and model of solar panel installed. There are still some installers out there that are installing silver frame panels or panels with a white back sheet. Usually it's just, just to save cost a little bit. But again, if you think about putting this on your home, you're gonna have to look at it every day. Make sure that you choose a solar panel that um, you're okay with how it looks. Now, coming in at number two is the cost, right? I mean, a lot of the, the decision about whether or not to invest in solar has to do with how quickly the system pays for itself. I mean, what is your return on investment? And so getting a solar panel with a competitive price per watt uh, is going to be a factor that you want to consider. Uh, and by the way, when you look at cost, you want to look at cost per watt, not cost per panel, right? Because really what we're talking about is cost per unit of energy production or cost per unit of power output. That's going to help you get a more apples to apples comparison on the solar panels that you're, that you're choosing. So if you have two solar panels that you like, one has a significantly lower price per watt, you may wanna go with the lower price option. Now, not all solar panels are created equal, and I'm gonna teach you a couple of other factors that allow you to get into more of the technical details of it. But if you're just looking for a basic, you know, how am I gonna get the best ROI on my solar system, look for a solar panel with a good competitive price per watt. Now, the third thing you're gonna to wanna to consider is the warranty of the panels. Just about all tier one solar panels are going to have a 25 year warranty. However, you're gonna to wanna to look to see if the warranty covers power output or does it cover power output and what's called product. What that means is 
the, the physical integrity of the product, is that also guaranteed or are they just guaranteeing the electrical power output? You know, back in the day, it was pretty common to have a solar panel that had a 25-year warranty where the 25 years was only covering power output and you were only getting 10 or 12 years on the product or on the mechanical, which really doesn't make any sense because basically what that was saying is, well, we're only going to guarantee the solar panel is going to hold up physically for 10 or 12 years, but in the chance that it does hold up longer than that, we'll guarantee the power output out to 25 years didn't really make any sense for consumers. So now most of the manufacturers have gone to a, a bumper to bumper, either 25 or 30 year warranty guaranteeing product and performance. Just a quick word from our sponsor, Savant Power and the Savant Energy Management System. If you're considering an investment in a solar plus storage system, then you're gonna to wanna to have maximum visibility and control of how much energy you're harvesting, how much energy you're storing, and how that energy is being distributed within the home. The new Savant power system allows you to dynamically control which circuits are on and which circuits are off depending on battery state of charge, allowing you to extend your battery running time during a blackout. The system also includes an integrated electric vehicle charger, allowing you to charge directly from solar or from the grid or a combination of both. So if you'd like to learn more information, you can visit the Savant Power website or click the link in the description below so that you can get in touch with an installer right away. However, some premium solar panel suppliers are also offering a service warranty or a labor warranty. Uh, and what the labor warranty means is that in the unlikely event that the original contractor that did the installation is unable to swap out a defective panel, the panel manufacturer will, at their own expense, pay for somebody else to come and swap that panel for you. So premium solar panels, or what we might call premium solar panels in today's competitive landscape, will typically offer some kind of a labor or service warranty. Uh, the top two brands that come to mind are REC and Maxion that have a labor warranty as part of their solar panel guarantee. So that's something to consider as well. All right, so now we're getting into more of the technical aspects of the solar panel selection. Uh, the number four consideration is module efficiency. Now, module efficiency is the easiest way to compare apples to apples at how space efficient the solar panels are at capturing sunlight and converting to electricity. Uh, just looking at the solar panel wattage does not really tell you a whole lot in terms of efficiency because what a lot of the manufacturers have done recently is they've just started making the panels a couple of inches wider or a couple of inches taller. And so that since they have more surface area of the solar cells, they can achieve higher watts per panel. Doesn't mean the panels got any more efficient. It just means you need to just, you need to use more roof space. But if you want to get an apples to apples comparison of how a, a one solar panel compares to another in terms of conversion efficiency, then module efficiency is your way that you can cut through all that noise. Now, as of this recording, we're in December 2023, uh, a standard or kind of a middle of the road module efficiency is gonna be right around 20%, uh, whereas a premium solar panel is gonna give you somewhere of 22% or higher. Uh, and so it might seem like a small difference, 20% versus 22%, but basically what, you're, what we're saying is a premium solar panel is gonna give you 10% more power output out of the same roof surface. So if, you, if you're designing a system and you have limited roof space to work with, it might make sense to pay a small price premium to get a solar panel that's gonna give you 10% more power out of the same roof area. So module efficiency is the one to look for there. Now, the fifth factor you wanna consider is the degradation rate. Now, when we talk about degradation rate, what we're talking about is each year that the solar panel is in service, it's gonna lose a small percentage of its performance each year. Now a standard solar panel loses about half a percent per year and out in year 25 at the end of the warranty, you're typically gonna see 80 or 85% of uh, initial rated power guaranteed from a standard panel. Now, a premium solar panel is generally gonna have a degradation rate of 0.3% or less, could be even 0.25% uh, per year or less, which means that instead of losing half a percent of its production per year, it's only losing about a quarter of a percent per year and so if you extrapolate that out all the way to year 25, a premium panel is gonna have at least 90% of initial rated power. Some of the top brands are guaranteeing 92% of initial rated power all the way out in year 25. So when you have a solar panel that degrades at a slower rate, what that means is you're able to capture more energy harvest over the lifetime of the system. So again, if you have an opportunity to get a premium solar panel that does not have a super premium price increase, 
right, that, that offers you a lower degradation rate, it may be worth it to pay five or 10 cents or even 15 cents a watt to get that better solar panel because over the life of the system, it's actually gonna produce more usable energy for you. So that's why degradation rate is important. And then the last factor is the temperature coefficient. Now, just like solar panels lose a certain amount of performance with age, they also lose a certain percentage of their performance when they have to operate in extreme high temperatures. And so what the temperature coefficient is, is it's what's the percentage of power lost per degree Celsius above the ideal temperature. Now, when we're talking about solar panel standard test conditions, the ideal temperature is 25 degrees Celsius or about 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And so you'll have uh, temperature characteristics on the solar panel that show you what percentage of power is lost for each, de each degree Celsius above that ideal temperature. So as of this recording, I would say a standard solar panel is gonna have uh, a temperature coefficient of about 0.35% per degree Celsius, where a premium solar panel, or at least premium in this particular area, is gonna have a degradation rate of somewhere around minus 0.26% or minus 0.24% per degree Celsius. The, the, the lower that number is, the better the, the solar panel is gonna perform during extreme heat or in extreme heat conditions. So the lower the temperature coefficient, the better that panel is gonna perform in extreme conditions, which again boils down to more total energy harvested over the lifetime of the system. So folks, this has been a brief discussion of the six factors to consider when choosing the right solar panel for your home. Um, as always, if you're getting good value from the information that we have here on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up uh, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your homepage and your feed and you can stay up to date with us. Of course, if you're a homeowner and you're in the process of looking at different solar panel options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote for any of the top solar panel options, uh, as always, feel free to reach out to us on the link below there. We'd be happy to set up a quick Zoom call so we can chat with one of our experts here and we'd be happy to get some pricing and some information to you. Well, folks, that pretty much does it for today's video. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. All right, I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your product or your business or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, feel free to reach out to us at the link below so you can set up a call with our media team to talk about your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the US residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you'd like to get your product, business, or technology in front of our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to our media team at the link below or email media at solarsurge.net.